In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new pocket PC from a company known as X Plus. And in the past, we've actually taken a look at a few of their smaller form factor laptops. Some people might refer to them as netbooks, and that's basically what we have here. They're calling this the Piccolo Series 71, and they are offering this with a couple different CPU options. We'll get to the specs in just a bit, but inside of the box, basically all we're going to get here is our 12 volt 3 amp charger and the netbook itself. For the longest time, I've been a fan of these smaller form factor laptops. And as you can see here, we've actually got a track point with this. Very reminiscent of a Lenovo idea pad right there when it comes to the keyboard section. It's got a dedicated left and right mouse click, but keep in mind, it has a touch screen built in. And for me, it just makes it a bit easier to navigate that way. When it comes to IO over here on the left hand side, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack full-size USB 3.0 port, and a micro SD card slot. Around back, another full-size 3.0 port, power input, and mini HDMI. So we can connect this to a larger display. And over on the left-hand side, not much going on here, but it does have dual stereo speakers built in, which I thought was pretty interesting. Usually with these smaller laptops, we only get a single speaker setup. On the bottom, I noticed that we have a little hatch here that can be removed with a single Phillips head screw. And inside we do have a real M.2 SSD. It's actually a 2242. This one came pre-installed with a 512 gigabyte drive, but I'm sure you could add a one terabyte to this thing pretty easily. So obviously we've got a very small form factor laptop here. The display is actually a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It is a touch display running at 60 Hertz. And again, it just makes it a little easier to navigate. But the track point or track nub, whatever you want to call it, does work here. You might need to up the mouse speed from the settings because it is a bit slow out of the box, but it can be adjusted. So like I mentioned, they are offering the Series 71 with a couple different CPU options. We've basically got the mid-range here with the Intel N100 CPU. So with this, we get four cores, four threads. It clocks up to 3.4 gigahertz, and it's not the most powerful CPU on the market but it's great for web browsing, email checking, document editing. This has 16 gigabytes of LP DDR4 RAM, a 512 gigabyte 2242 M.2 SSD like we saw, a seven inch 1280 by 860 Hertz display. So it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Wi-Fi 5, I believe we've got Bluetooth 5, I believe we've got Bluetooth 4.3 here, but don't quote me on that. I really couldn't find the version. It's got a 27 watt hour battery and out of the box, this is running Windows 11 Home. But since we've got an x86 CPU, you could theoretically install Linux here. Now I'm not sure if a uh, touch would work out of the box or anything like that with Linux installed. I personally haven't tried it. If you end up getting one of these and you install Linux, let me know how it goes in the comments below. Overall, super portable. Using that touch screen is a lot easier than using this uh, track point here. I should probably up the speed. I should probably up, I should probably up this point. I should probably up the pointer speed from the settings. But yeah, I've just been getting by with the touch screen. Now it does have the physical left and right mouse click. The nub itself doesn't have uh, gestures built in. So you can't just tap on the nub to select something. You will have to use one of those buttons down there. And uh, we've got our left and right. So there's our left. We've got a right. So you can go through, select anything. But uh, yeah, it's just a lot easier to get up on the screen itself and use the built-in touch just to get around on this unit. The Intel N100 in this thing does boost up to around eight watts in this. And in the past, we've been able to take the N100 up to 15 watts, but given the form factor here, I wanted to leave it stock just to see what it would do. And when it comes to like web browsing and everything like that, it's a pretty snappy experience. You wanna do some video playback from YouTube? Not too bad. And we've got those dual stereo speakers. Again, I thought this was pretty cool because usually we just have a single speaker sitting on the bottom. They're side firing speakers. They don't get terribly loud, but they're also not tinny like some other mini netbooks that we've seen in the past. The whole setup wouldn't be too bad if you need something for video playback, web browsing, and document editing. Now this thing is not listed as a gaming machine whatsoever, but you know, we've tested the N100 in the past in several different PCs. I kind of have an idea of what we can do with this. And of course, with this netbook, I did want to test out some gaming and emulation. So we're going to go ahead and jump over there now. 
When it comes to the Intel N100 in this thing, we're not going to be playing Cyberpunk 2077 at full speed. We do need to go down to some indie games, older stuff, and when it comes to emulation, this actually handles GameCube and Wii pretty well. There are a few games where it does struggle, but for the most part, we can go to 2x with it. Even given the fact that this is only going up to 9 watts right now, you can use a third-party software to get this up to 15 or even go into the BIOS with it, but then you're not going to get much battery life out of it, and this thing can get quite hot at those kind of TDPs. But at 9 watts, it's not doing a bad job here with Hades 2 at medium settings 800p. Going back a bit with Dirt 3, again, we've got to go back to the older games here to get really good performance. And you can see we're actually over 90 FPS with this game. 800p medium settings. Not horrible. And I've got an Xbox controller connected right now over Bluetooth. I also wanted to check out Half-Life 2, low settings, 800p. I probably should have just taken this up to medium or even high because at low 800, we're over 200 FPS. And I knew we'd have a good time with the games that I tested here. Even something like OG Skyrim runs at about 50 FPS, low 800p on this setup. Now it's time to move over to some emulation, and we've got some PSP using PPSSPP, God of War, Ghost of Sparta, 2x resolution using the DirectX 11 backend. You could go with Vulkan if you want to, but I find that these Intel iGPUs do work a little better with DirectX 11. If you can go up to DirectX 12, it may benefit a bit depending on what emulator you're on. But I also wanted to show off the Dolphin emulator, and we've got Tatsunoko versus Capcom, so this is a Wii game. We're at, na we're at native Wii resolution with this one. If I took it up to 2x, it did kind of dip down a bit. But even while pulling off these special moves, lots of particle effects, we're at 60 FPS with it on this N100 mini laptop. Something like this isn't for everybody, but I've always been a big fan of these netbooks. Unfortunately, when it comes to this one, I mean, it's a bit underpowered for what they want to get for it. They're charging $249 for the N100 version, and I believe they're offering an N200 version, which does give us a little bit of a boost in performance, but not by much. With the thermals, TDP we have here with the smaller form factor unit, you're not going to benefit that much going up to the N200 from the N100 in this thing. But if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links in the description to their official website. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the Series 71, just let me know in the comments below. This thing just kind of showed up unannounced and I figured I'd make a quick video on it. But uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.